So this project is my entry into the No Brave Challenge. And it's all centered around an idea I've used before on my channel of negative space. Part one. The mold. And I'm gonna try and make a few different types, but for right now, the first one involves carving. I would give it all away to you right now. You just tell me. So I've managed to cut off a chunk, but because it's not wide enough, I'm gonna need to flatten one edge and then glue another piece to it. Thought it would last forever. Guess it's finally over now. I can't breathe, but I'm doing better. And to explain the point of these circles, my carving method is to take a template, divide it into sections of different depth, and then transfer that to circles on the workpiece. And then I can route out each circle corresponding to the depth, and then use a chisel to finalise the curve. Any size of So now I need to repeat for the rest of the ring. And now I've got the rough circles carved out, I can chisel the edges smooth. One time seems a bunch, you don't see in front of us. I'm going to utilise a texture I've been exploring for a while now, and that's split wood. So with the carving, we used a lot of tools. With the split wood, we reduced to just a hot glue gun. But with the third mould, I'm going to use none at all. Except fire. Everything's coming to you. Plaster of Paris. It's cheap, it sets quickly, it's got a really nice white colour and it picks up fine details really well, like the card marks in the bowl and the split wood texture. And it's also really easy to mix. I'm just pouring enough water to fill about half of my mould and then I can add my Plaster of Paris until the mountain develops on the surface. And then I need to mix it, and then once it gets a bit thicker and more viscous, I'm going to pour it into the mould, add an acetate top, which has some silicon underneath it to seal it, and then rotate it. Any 
eye is a wound Releasing to the room of sense. Now the plaster's gone hard, I'm going to leave it overnight to properly cure. Step six, the big reveal. When you do Seven finishing. When you see a change, it's nothing but his appearance. Is oh. And it was at this point, right here, that I realised the project had failed. You see, what I'd been able to cover in editing was that I discovered plaster doesn't actually rotate to give you an even thickness. Let me explain. So the concept behind this piece was to make a mould, fill it with plaster and then rotate it. And what this would end up doing is evenly distributing the plaster around all sides of the mould. And then I could cut open the top and leave me with a bowl. But what actually happens is that the plaster clumps together, which leaves you with one extremely thin side and one really thick side, regardless of how well you rotate it. Which is why this one broke, this one broke as well, and this one is too fragile to take out of the mould. However, I don't think Keith, the guy that ran this challenge, did it so people could make the most technically well executed bowls. I think for that, you just use a lathe. But I think he did it to get people to think creatively to make the thing they want to make, even if they don't have the necessary tool. And it's on this basis that I think this project has a massive amount of potential. And that's because, even though it didn't work personally for me in plaster, if you took a material which didn't set in lumps, like concrete, or material that's malleable and becomes hard, like clay, you have the ability to make hundreds of different moulds in different textures, forms and sizes from the voids and shapes that surround us every day. So I'm going to end this video here. So thanks for watching. If anybody has a kiln in the northwest of England, get in touch with me and keep tuned on the channel because I'm not going to let this project beat me. After filming, I redid the split wood bowl and it's worked. So the trick is to physically smear the plaster around the mould instead of trying to rotate it.